Hello, Jemalov here and welcome back to the beginner's guide to Dwarf Fortress, a tutorial series where I'm building an example fortress showing how to build a fortress and how to help the dwarf survive. It is now 24th of limestone early autumn, so it's actually just two months until the supply caravan arrives at the late autumn. Uh, in the previous part I uh, built uh, Ref inside refuse stockpile, creating an airlock using uh, using doors, and I created a butchery and a tanner's shop in case uh, I need to start and, and will start uh, butchering some animals. In this one, I'll be uh, hopefully finishing off my uh, my safe trade depot, and um, also I think I'll be setting the individual bedrooms for the dwarves that I uh, dug out earlier. Let's begin by uh, connecting these two bridges here in my safe trade depot uh, into, into levers. Let's go into my dining room where I have my, uh, my lever room. So uh, capital T for traps and levers and L for lever. And uh, here again, because the Bridges are kind of the other one is in the southeast or bottom right, the other one is in northwest or top left. I will set the levers in the same way here. One lever here, one lever there. And I will press capital N to set place a note. I have one already there in my one one lever, so place and new new uh, point, let's name this. This is the depot outside access. And this other one, where I will place a new one, name it with N, is depot inside access. This way, again as I mentioned when placing that other note, uh, if I happen to take a break from the game, or even just a day and I don't remember which note, I can always check what this lever is. And also uh, because it is a kind of a logical shape in the, in the bottom right, the outside and on the top left inside, if I go here, it's kind of a similar, similar shape. But uh, when you get a whole lot of levers without the notes, it is uh, quite difficult to uh, worry, uh, remember what they do, and in emergency uh, you really don't want to think of, uh, going, go ahead and pull the wrong lever when, the, when something, something big and ugly is coming towards your fortress. I'm waiting for the mechanic to come and place those levers and he went to eat, the bastard. No? No he didn't, he was actually just finishing eating. Okay, come and do it please. There he goes. Now we can connect these ones to the bridges. So Q and take this one and link up to a bridge with B and then uh, with plus and minus choose the correct bridge and press enter and choose couple of mechanisms. Press ESC, come back here, take the other lever, add new task, link to a bridge move with the plus and minus until the correct bridge is chosen, enter and choose some mechanisms and those will be connected. I need to create more mechanisms when that is done but I will let the mechanic deal with that. So it's always uh, one one uh, mechanism for the lever and then uh, two mechanisms uh, per connection from that lever. You can connect one lever to several uh, several machinery, including uh, bridges or other things. There's a whole lot of things you can do with levers, but uh, I'm uh, just covering covering the basics here, uh, like uh, opening and closing a bridge. It was actually quite fast with it. It doesn't take a skilled mechanic that long to do it. Yeah, I think he I think he did it. The way to way to uh, check that if uh, if a something is connected without pulling the lever, is uh, going with T and uh, look into the bridge. And because there's a mechanism here, I know that this bridge has been taken care of. And if I come here, 
we have a mechanism here as well. And then uh, if I go look at the look at the lever with a T, which is the view items in buildings, the same key, I can see that there's two mechanisms in this lever, so it's being connected somewhere. This other one is still work in progress. It only has one mechanism, which is the lever itself. On pause, the mechanic finishes the job, and now it's actually done. And what I want to do is uh, pull this lever, the inside axis, an uh, idle dwarf will come and pull it, and this bridge is now raised or closed, uh, however you want to do it, say it. And now I can uh, open this uh, axis from the outside by channeling in from here, creating uh, ramps down. And uh, while at it, I will remove this excess ramps here, leaving ramps for the, for anyone who falls in this mini mode to come out. And when that ramp is done, down from here into this area, there will be a safe access for the traders, the, their wagons, into the trade depot. While this inside access is closed, uh, the way into my fortress is not open for anyone else. And when the traders arrive, they arrive into the trade depot, they start unloading their goods, I wait that they, everyone gets in, their guards get in, and then I will close this uh, outside access, preventing anyone else to come in. And only then, when this trade, uh, trade depot is safe, or locked in, I will uh, uh, lower this bridge, allowing my dwarves to carry stuff into the trade depot. And later on I can even uh, do some fortifications here so that my dwarves can be outside of it uh, shooting in, in case something does get in be behind the traders. But uh, And also uh, if, if, uh, if someone wants to, this system locking the traders in can be used in uh, capturing the traders and capturing all the items they have. In that, get, that case it's good to have some sort of system to kill the traders. Uh, I, uh, I definitely wouldn't do that for the Dwarven caravan, but uh, some, someone might want to do that for the elves or humans just to, uh, just to pick a fight against them. But uh, uh, I wouldn't recommend that if you are if you are a beginner, but it is possible with this kind of setup where you uh, can lock the traders in. Okay, but uh, now that is done apart from uh, that uh, channeling. If that channeling is done during this uh, month and a half, uh, will be fine. So the safe trade depot is basically now done, after that channeling is done. If, uh, if things get busy, I will undesignate some stuff so that the miners get on that. Um, and then uh, back to the kind of maintenance task. Some things I have forgotten is to uh, assign more things to be chopped down. I'm also uh, clearing clearing some space here for a possible possible walls later on. But um, you should always keep your just like the miner, the woodcutter should never be uh, without a job somewhere uh, somewhere uh, inside. I think my hunting dog here gave some puppies in the pen and pasture, going into the settings and, uh, okay, one puppy. I don't want this puppy to be in this one by one uh, area, because they might start fighting if that happens. It's the same thing, same thing with these other animals. You want to keep an eye that uh, there's not too many, too many uh, animals in this uh, single, single pasture, and that they have plenty to eat. Plenty to eat here, uh, they don't eat all the grass. Uh, big enough pastures and big enough, uh, big enough pasture with uh, less enough animals. And uh, right, bedrooms. Let's go below into my dining hall, and then uh, I have the dormitory. And as explained before, it is completely fine to just use a dormitory. With the vampires in game, it might even help. You can uh, easily spot 
easier to spot the, the vampires when they are sucking someone dry while they are sleeping if uh, everyone is sleeping in the same room. However, uh, individual bedrooms will make the dwarves happier because they own that room that uh, that they claim or I assign to them and then they can admire their own items and they can store items in there and they, uh, they will get happy thoughts for sleeping comf comfortably in their own room and things like that. So let's build a bed. Uh, bed is the only thing that is needed for, for a bedroom. Let's first create here uh, four bedrooms and then uh, I will uh, put doors in those bedrooms. And again, remember this was just one one possible design going for a kind of a maximum efficiency with a mini minimized distance between the central staircase and, and the rooms. Okay, and there to go, the, the beds are there. And now when I get Q, I can create a room out of this uh, bedroom and press enter. Um, a dwarf will come uh, and sleep here and in the process claim it if the dwarf doesn't have a room yet and the room hasn't been claimed. I could assign the bedrooms to the dwarves and uh, I could go, could go as far as uh, creating specifically a bedroom for a dwarf. Uh, creating items that they like, creating them from the materials that Dwarf likes. But uh, I've, I've never gone that far. But uh, And I very rarely assign these rooms myself. I will let the Dwarves pick the, pick the rooms they uh, they happen to get into. Basically it happens in a way that Dwarf, dwarf gets the need to sleep and uh, they will prefer free rooms over the dormitory and when they get into one and start sleeping they in the process claim it. And um, so yes. And um, in some cases uh, if the dwarves are a couple two dwarves will claim the same room and uh, but uh, they will actually claim two rooms. So uh, each dwarf will claim a bed uh, eventually. You might uh, might want to create a kind of a um, room for the family if if you want, but that's that's just that's just optional. So anyway, that is uh, that is now done. That's a basic bedroom, a bed. Uh, but the dwarves will like it even more if I uh, build some containers in it with age. And uh, the containers in this case, uh, I won't don't want to place any bags as containers, but coffers that I have created with the mason. So each room will get a bed, this kind of a coffer or a chest, and uh, and a cabinet. This is kind of a basic, basic uh, dwarven bedroom. And then uh, with uh, cabinets F, uh, I don't have them. Anyway, they would go there in the in the same uh, in the free space. And um, you can create. As I mentioned when I was digging these out, you can create bedrooms in many ways. You can do a do a bedroom bedroom uh, like this, or make it make it even even bigger. But for uh, normal dwarves, this kind of a uh, free long free long uh, bedroom is is fine. They'll uh, they'll get a whole lot of whole lot of happiness from just that. They'll have their own rooms. Um, I will do this same thing for all these bedrooms here, creating more beds, creating more coffers, creating more cabinets, creating more doors to each of these. So uh, furnishing furnishing bedrooms for the dwarves, it's uh, uh, it takes quite some time uh, as the fortress keeps fortress keeps growing, getting all those uh, doors, beds, and stuff built. But that'll be just uh, just repeating this. So uh, now you know how to make an individual bedroom from the from the bed. And um, since I got that done, plus I still have the dormitory. I uh, I like to keep that even if there are individual bedrooms, so that uh, uh, when the when the fortress grows, even the, even the new immigrants immediately have a have a place to sleep. Even if I haven't had the time to create uh, create bedrooms yet, 
uh, have quite many idle idle dwarves. So uh, in this space, I will uh, start creating some uh, additional stockpiles. Actually, probably in this level, I do need to create a furniture stockpile. And uh, one stockpile I want to create already is a stockpile for more barrels. Mm, because this one is probably probably getting uh, getting a little uh, s small in space. So let's create stockpile furnitures with you. And uh, I will create it here for now. Let's make this one. Disable everything else but large pots and barrels. And I um, will make sure that this stockpile doesn't have them. Yep. And now, when I have the barrel and large pot stockpile here, next to the kitchen and still, I want this, this to keep uh, be filled at all times. So I, I will make an order for this stockpile to take with T from this other stockpile. So if at any moment this stockpile is empty, but this stockpile has items, dwarves will move the items into this other stockpile. And that way you can uh, queue up the, the stockpiles and uh, even assign them to workshops that way. In the in same way, I, uh, I might have a wood, a very, very big wood, wood stockpile somewhere, and then uh, have a small one next to the carpenters or wood burner, and then uh, those stockpiles take from the main stockpile. We'll need to keep an keep an eye on the miners so that they get get to. Uh, making this one. This is pretty much their last priority because the dwarves tend to tend to move from left to right and top down or north south when they are filling the filling the orders. So keeping keeping an eye on the dwarves while they are while they are working. While uh, while that is happening, I'll see if I have. Uh, okay, I need to create more beds. Let's make it 20 while at it, and I'll keep an eye on the empty bin situation. That seems to be okay. There are some tables and chairs there that I haven't haven't built, so I will uh, continue building my. Uh, Continue building my dining hall. I will leave some spare thrones and uh, such if I need to need to create some additional offices. For example, the bookkeeper and manager won't be the same person or something like that. And I have a, a bit forgotten to keep an eye on my drink situation. Okay, there's plenty. Unfortunately, pretty much only only to woven wine. Um, I want to process some pigtails uh, into thread and um, also probably some sweet pots into in some more woven syrup. So let's create an order from the unit list manager. Let's process plants, make it eight, those are the pigtails, and then process plants into barrel twice. That is the the sweet pots, and while at it, I will also create a brew drink for five. So there will there will be other other drinks available than just wine. Now that we have used all the plump helmets for it, mm. at some moment when you start getting a huge supply of uh, of alcohol, you might want to consider allowing using using the booze for cooking but uh, i'm not allowing that uh, that yet that might come come handy in later but uh, 
each each meal needs something solid in them, and then uh, the other parts can be liquid, like like wine or uh, or actually syrup as well. But you always need something like eggs or uh, plump helmets or meat or fish for the for the meals. And we get another batch of migrants. How about that? That's uh, that's an interesting thing. I will let uh, let the migrants come in and uh, take a look at them in dwarf therapist. I probably won't be showing that because it'll just be the just be the same. Oh well, might as well might as well make a short short video of uh, just going through the migrants. But uh, let's take a look at them and let them in and see uh, see what we get. So let's get view as in uh, as in views. Why is there a turkey hen? There are wild turkeys outside. That is interesting. Okay, let's take a look at the migrants and see how many we get. As mentioned in the previous migrant wave situation, these uh, two two migrant waves during the first year are random. Uh, anything from between two and ten dwarves, and then later on it'll be affected by the wealth of your fortress and whether or not uh, dwarven caravan makes it out of the area and back to the mountain homes. So anyway, let's uh, let's unpause. That's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. And let's see their skills. A novice butcher. Okay, great waxwork. Great negotiator. Okay. Great weaver. Nice. I can look into creating some cloth or uh, such uh, next time. Excellent. This is very, very common that these uh, immigrants or migrants, especially in the first waves, come with great social skills. But this guy is a great wood burner. That is actually, that is really good. He will burn, burn wood faster. Since the, these laborers are somewhat random, or almost completely random, it's uh, quite lucky that I did get exactly weaver, because I wanted, wanted to create some cloth. If I, if I'd get the gem cutter, then uh, then that would be great as well. Uh, we have a miner here. That's uh, that's great. Also some uh, very very beginner skills in some military stuff, but not not too much. Let's see if we get more. Five, six. Okay, nice. He has a very very newbie. New bit dwarf, just a novice, novice something. Uh, we have adequate. Well, this one, this one is pretty much basic as well. We did get a reindeer pool. Nice. Someone brought brought a reindeer. Is there more? No, I think that's it. So our dwarven population is now 20. We got six, six new ones. That's actually pretty darn good. Okay, uh, as they are running running in from there, I want them to uh, come in. They uh, new migrants. They uh, head straight to a meeting area. And now that they are inside, I will pause the game. And now I will, uh, in the next video, open up open up dwarf therapist and look through the look through the dwarves, check their professions and stuff. You want to you want to let them come inside first in case they uh, for example there's some novice woodcutter they might be carrying an axe and if you disable that laborer there in the edge of the map they will drop the they will drop the axe there and same thing for hunter who happens to have a crossbow and stuff so uh, at least let their uh, let them carry all the all the things inside and then start uh, looking through the laborers. Right. With twenty, with twenty dwarves, we will get, we will uh, be able to do a whole lot of things here. Things are moving fast, and um, at least next time, uh, after checking the dwarf therapist and the migrants, we'll be uh, creating loom to create cloth from the from the threads, and uh, possibly while at it uh, also, uh, for example's sake, create some cloth. From uh, from uh, create some clothes from that uh, from that cloth. Anyway, 
migrants next and uh, moving on from there. Thanks for watching this one. Take care. Bye bye.